During the war, Covenant life was varied as humanities, with several species and multiple castes, everyone filled a role. The Ungoi served a multitude of these roles, their primary role consisting mainly of being a labor force and deploying into battle as cannon fodder. This is due to the fact that they reproduced very quickly, and if their population wasn't controlled, they would run rampant. They were treated as second-class citizens and weren't even allowed to use weapons until their rebellion in 2462. Some Ungoi, however, stood apart from the pack and were even a part of special forces groups, or deacons, or data analysts on board spacecraft. The Kigyar were a short step up from the social ladder, politically and culturally speaking. Although they had a lower stature, they are intelligent, cunning, and often seek their next prize more than prescribing to the religion of the Covenant. Most saw their relationship in the Covenant more as a business deal than faith. They served as light infantry assets, snipers, police force, overseers, and were allowed to control light tonnage spacecraft. The Yanmei were oddities in the social structure, adhering more to their hives and colonies than a strict adherence to the Great Journey, but there were of course exceptions. They were exceptional mechanics and laborers, and very technologically gifted. The Lekola were more of an oddity than other species as well, not necessarily prescribing to the Covenant religion, but enigmatic spiritual values. They were always poorly understood, but had a social contract with the Prophets for access to things like materials, spacefaring abilities, and trade. They served primarily as infantry as larger colonies split in two, or as megastructures such as scarabs. The Sangheili were one of the two original species in the Covenant and held the highest office of the High Council, save for the Sanshu. They serve a multitude of roles across the Covenant Empire, and they are part of the governing body on High Charity, and there are many city-states on their homeworld and St. Healy colonies that they control. They also control agriculture, technology, and military, both Navy and ground forces. The Jirohane were the latest species to join the Covenant, but rose quicker than any other species. So young, in fact, that Dr. Halsey was actually born the year the Brutes were added to the Covenant. After nuking themselves back to the Stone Age, the Covenant quickly defeated them. In a surge of enlightenment with so much death and destruction of their species, they were quick to adopt the Great Journey as an ideology and were fervently loyal to the Prophets. In just 60 short years, they joined the Covenant and became the top species in favor of the High Prophets. They served primarily as shock troops and heavy infantry. The Sanchium, or Prophets, had the best lives by far. They were situated at the top of the pyramid as the ruling religious caste. While the Sangheili were always the military arm of the Covenant Empire, the Prophets ran the show logistically, financially, technologically, and theocratically. They had cush lives either aboard massive vessels or well-off estates on high charity, getting high or seducing fertile females. 